welcome to Excel magic trick number 1496. Hey, we're still trying to allocate invoice header amounts down to the transaction line item table. But in this video, we get to see how to do it with Power BI Desktop. Now, we still have the same fundamental problem we've looked at in the last four videos. We have an invoice or header level table where the amounts are for the entire invoice. And then we have a line item or detail level fact table where each line represents one line in the invoice for one product. And when we want to use product as a condition or criteria in our report, we have to somehow allocate these invoice level amounts down to the line item level. Now, this is video number five. We've seen a bunch of awesome methods. So let's go over to Power BI Desktop. Now, I have a start file that you can download here that has this data model. Now, a few things are different over here in Power BI Desktop than over in Power Pivot in Excel. Here we see on the left, we're allowed to switch between relationship view. Over in Power Pivot, it's called diagram view. If we click on data over on the right, we can look at each one of our tables. Another thing that is different, we could see the icons are different. And that little sigma right there for invoice discount in header, if we go back over to relationships, header, invoice discount, that sigma there means that this is a column with numbers. Over in Power Pivot, when we're looking in the pivot table field list, that icon means it's a measure. Now, if I go back over to tables and over here, when we create calculated columns and measures, we'll see different icons over here. There's a third location over on the left. If we click on Report View, it's a blank canvas. We'll come here and make our report at the end. For the time being, we're going to build our data model. Now, the first trick is, is we have the invoice level amounts over here, and we need to allocate them here. But I need to calculate at the header or invoice level the percentage invoice discount that I can use to allocate discount. Then at the invoice or header level, I'm going to have to allocate shipping, and we're going to do it by weight. So we're actually going to calculate the total weight for each invoice. Now, that DAX formula for total invoice weight will be particularly cool because we'll have to use related table to go look up product and quantity, bring the related table back. Then we'll use related to go and get the weight, and we'll calculate total weight for each invoice. We will then use total weight over in line item detail table row by row to calculate our allocation rate for invoice shipping. Now we're going to start off by going over to our data view. And we're going to do things a little bit differently in this video. I'm going to click on Line Item Detail Table. Now when we did DAX and Power Pivot, we actually multiplied these two columns to get line item sales. But we did it over in sum x at the header level. Watch this. This is pretty cool. We can do this over in Power Pivot, but it would take more steps. I'm going to go to Home. This is a table that I imported. And anytime you import a table into Power BI Desktop, it actually uses Power Query. And that's Power Query right there. Over in Excel, we have Get and Transform in the Data Ribbon tab. Over here, it's just Edit Queries. I'm going to click the drop down and say Edit Queries. Now, I actually imported the whole data model from Power Pivot in Excel. It gave us these steps. But we can come over and just like in Power Query, in fact, in our last video, we saw a user interface in Power Query that looks similar. It's almost the same over here. There's some differences, like instead of close and load, it says close and apply. But it's almost exactly the same. Over here on the left, we see our queries. I'm going to click on Line Item Invoice Detail Table. Now, I would like to multiply quantity and unit price to actually get a column that gives us line sales. Now, we totally could do this in a DAX calculated column, but we can also do it over here in Power Query. I'm going to click on Quantity, hold Control, click on Unit Price. We actually saw this last video in Power Query. Now we go up to Add Columns. 
from number standard. It looks exactly like what we did in our last video. We click on multiply. If we look up into the formula bar, by the way, this formula bar is not showing by default. You have to come up to view and select formula. But there's our table.add column function. We can double click multiplication because I don't like that name, or we're going to call this something smart like line sales and enter. Now, this column right here is not a DAX column. In Power Query over in Excel and here in Power BI Desktop, the Power Query functional language is called M. So that's the M code. We're using table.add columns in the Power Query interface to add a column. Now I'm going to come over to Home, Close, and Apply. Now, the difference between creating a DAX calculated column and doing it in Power Query, I have never dealt with a data set big enough for this to be an issue. But when you create DAX calculated columns during compression of really large data sets, the DAX calculated columns are done last. And sometimes a DAX calculated column won't be compressed as efficiently as columns that are imported. And as far as I understand, when we do it up in Power Query, that doesn't count as a DAX calculated column. So all the columns will be compressed at the first part of the compression cycle, and it will be compressed efficiently. But here we have line sales. Now, our goal is to get the total of a particular invoice. If I come over here, this is different than over in Power Pivot. We have to right click and sort ascending. There's no little. Uh, drop down arrow like there is in Power Pivot. We could see the same number repeated three times. So we need to add these amounts over in our header table. So I come up to Header. I want to add a DAX calculated column. I come up to Modeling, New Column. Up here in the formula bar, I'm going to call this Invoice Sales. And we're going to still use sum x, And I need to get using related table, a little table that represents the lines for the invoice over in the line item table. So we use related table. Related table will allow us to look up multiple matching items. There's our item invoice detail table, close parentheses. Now comma, we still need to put an expression simply the new line sales column we created in Power Query. Close parentheses and Enter. And there we get our total for each invoice. Now, I don't really want to have invoice sales here. We're actually never going to use this. If we had dimension tables from this for customer at the invoice level, then we might use this. But we're not going to use this in this model. So I'm actually going to get rid of this. I'm going to, since our goal is simply to have percent discount, that's what I'm going to call this. Invoice percent discount. There's the total, but I actually need to take in the numerator that discount and divide it by that total sales amount. So we're going to use divide, just like we did over in Power Pivot. The numerator. Another thing that's different about over here in Power BI Desktop is you can't click on a column like you can in Power Pivot. So we're actually going to have to type it out. F invoice, and there's our invoice discount tab, comma. So we have numerator, denominator. Alternative results, we're going to leave that out. It'll automatically put a blank if there was an error. All right, come to the end and Enter. And there's our invoice percentage discount. We will actually look this up from the line item table and use it for each line item sales. Now over here in the header table, we still have to calculate total weight. So I'm going to come up to New Column. Up in the Formula Bar, Invoice Weight. And we're going to use sum x. And we need to look up using Related Table, Line Item Invoice Detail. Close parentheses. That table has product and quantity. And what do we want? We want to calculate total weight. We, in essence, want the weight for each line for each invoice so SUMX can add. So the columns from related table, FL, and we're going to down arrow to quantity. Now we have quantity, but we don't have the weight. 
So because over here in the header table, we actually have a little mini line item table, we can access the relationship. Actually, SUMX is an iterator that's going to iterate over this table. And because we're iterating over this table, it can see the relationship to the product table. So times, and now we use related. And there's the D product down arrow to wait, close parentheses. So when I hit Enter, that is beautiful. We, in essence, did a total table lookup to one table, and then we did another lookup from that little mini table over to a third table. Relationships, related table, and related are totally awesome. Now we have the two columns we need to make our line item allocations. So now we go over to the line item detail table, new column. And this one's going to be called line discount equal. And we need our line sales that we calculated, FL, down arrow, I see line sales tab. And times, now we use related to go from the line item many side over to the header one side. And there it is, our discount percent. Close parentheses and Enter. Now we need to calculate the next column, which is line shipping, new column. We're going to come up to the formula bar, line shipping equal sign. And in parentheses, we're going to calculate the line weight. We have the quantity right there, FL, and then I down arrow to quantity times, and we're going to look up using related, and I down arrow, I see my weight, close parentheses. If I hit Enter here, this isn't line shipping. This is just the weight for each line. Now I divide this by divide, and we're looking up from the many side using related to the one side with our invoice weight, close parentheses. If I hit Enter, that's just the allocation percentage. We can see the three invoices. Those amounts add up to one. That's a one because there was only one line in this invoice. The last thing we need to do is look up from this many side to the header one side times related. I see my invoice shipping tab, close parentheses, and Enter. Now we have allocated the complete shipping across the three different line items. Now let's go look over here at our tables and notice the icons. There's a little table with the sigma there and there. Those are calculated columns. The sigmas, again, mean just that's a number column. Now we need to calculate two measures in our line item invoice. So the table is selected, so I'm going to come up to Modeling, New Measure. And up in the formula bar, I'm going to type Discount on Invoice. And this is another difference between Power Pivot DAX and DAX over here in Power BI Desktop. We use an equal sign when we're creating a measure or a calculated column or a new table. Over in DAX, of course, you have to use colon equal sign for a measure and just equal sign for a calculated column. I'm simply going to sum FL, and there's our line discount tab, close parentheses, and Enter. I'm going to come up and add. This is a measure, so I want to add my number formatting right to the formula. If we look over at our table, now we have a new icon. It's like a little calculator. I wish they did not use a little calculator. That reminds me of what we had to do before, spreadsheets in Power BI Desktop. But there it is. That means that's a measure. Now we need to create our second measure. Click the Measure button. Up in the formula bar, ship it on invoice equals sum FL. And there's line shipping. Close parentheses, Enter. Now I come up and add some currency. Now let's go over to Report View. I see all sorts of columns. I do not want people dragging number columns or calculated columns. And so back over to Diagram View. Now in Power Pivot, you can select a column, hold Shift, and select another column, highlight them all, and then right click Hide from Client Tool. I don't know how to do that over here in Power BI Desktop. But I do not want to use the header table at all. So the whole table, I'm simply going to right click, not Hide from Client Tool like Power Pivot, but Hide in Report View. 
Unit price, right click, hide and report. Line sales, hide and report. So I hit all of those. I guess I don't want, I definitely don't want product. I want to hide this from report view. I want them to pull it from this table over here. Right click, hide in report view. So now if we go over to report view, there we have just the columns that they can pull. And I include, oh, I don't want quantity. Quantity, right click, hide in report view. Now we come over here and we have just what we want, the two measures and the potential categories. Probably should have hidden uh, weight ounces also. Now I'm going to click on clustered column, then select product and discount and shipping. Come over here to the grid and pull this to the side to make it a little bit wider. I love this. Look at this. They named this smartly, discount on invoice and shipping by product. That is an amazing, quick and easy visualization. Now we can um, clean this up a little bit or change it. There's a little paint roller when you paint your house. I'm going to click on that. Data label. So I'm going to come down and select on. Actually, I didn't need to open that. I'm going to close that. The title. I'm going to click to open that. I want center down here. We can see it's centered. And then increase the font size a bit. Maybe come over and change the size. And I want a, a slicer, but I want to use another column chart. I'm going to use the same thing, clustered column. And now, bring this over to the side or somewhere, a type of slicer. Come over to product. And remember, we have our numbers that can be sliced by anything from this dimension or lookup table. So I'm going to select manufacturer. Come down, select discount and shipping. And watch how this works. I can click on Gel Boomerangs. And different than a slicer, a slicer would completely hide everything. It just kind of grays it out. Now I can click on Colorado, and it shows me just those, but leaves grayed out the comparisons. That is amazing. Not only that, but when we click on something in a chart, that doesn't happen in Excel. It actually filters. It'll filter everything. If we added other visualizations, it would totally filter it. All right, well, that was a little fun with Power BI Desktop. If we go back over to our tables, we actually saw how to add line sales using our home edit queries. And then over in our header table, we did a single formula to calculate percentage discount, invoice weight. And then we use both of those numbers in a lookup using related over in our line item detail, where we created line discount, line shipping. We also hid all of the columns we didn't want to show up in the report, and then created a couple of measures, simple sums to add discount and shipping. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including our next video where you're going to have an opportunity to vote on which one of the methods we saw in the last five videos you liked most. All right, we'll see you next video.